We're talking with Pete Kors, Chairman, Capital Campaign, Board Member, Western Stock Show Association. Pete, thanks so much for your time today. Oh, yeah, it's, it, it's a pleasure talking to you. It's great to be with you. Thank you. First of all, tell us where and how you grew up. As a fourth generation member of the Coors family, there I grew up go. in Golden, Colorado. Right. You know, back in those days, there was a riding stable not too far away. The Golden Brewery was relatively small in those days, and we had free reign. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> it was a great place to grow up. How did agriculture, you know, everything that the, the comes from the National Western Stock Show, how'd that get into your blood? My mom used to take us to the stock show when we were right. real little. I don't know, I, I grew up watching uh, the great you know, Western movies at the Golden sure. Theater in downtown Golden, Colorado. Now, you know, there's that adage about, hey, if you want something done, just ask a really busy person. So I'm sure you get this question all the time. How did you get convinced to become the chairman of this $100 million campaign? Well, I've been on the board for a long time. Right. And the Western Stock Show Association was going through negotiations with the city, and we made agreement that we would raise $50 million in cash, and we were not quite sure how we were going to do that. And I said, look, I think I'd have to be something I could contribute, take that on. And the next question I asked is, where's, where's headquarters? Where, 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 where's the stock show going to be? And the answer was, well, that's not in the current plans. Uh, we'll find offices in some of the other facilities that are being built. And I said, no, nah, that won't work. And so with uh, Doug Jones, who's uh, now our chairman, we started looking at real estate and we found a place and, and uh, we need about 100,000 square feet. I said, okay, well then instead of 50 million, we got to raise 100 million. <laughs> so, uh, so we took it on and it's created a lot of excitement within the community and it's been a lot of work, but a lot of fun. Right. And uh, I guess, you know, people say, why are you doing this? I'm doing it because this is an opportunity to capture and preserve the Western culture, uh, our values, our way of life. The agreement is for 100 years, so basically we say in perpetuity. Right, right. At least my perpetuity. <laughs> <laughs> and so it just seemed to, to make sense uh, to uh, put a team together and begin to work on it. And, and the National Western really has not had a robust history of fundraising, so how steep a hill was it to climb to kind of get this off the ground and, and, and start to raise what you've been raising? All the money we've raised uh, through events here at the National Western has been for scholarship programs. Mm -hmm. We have 100 uh, scholarship recipients, which is exciting in, in sure. Colorado and Wyoming primarily, almost, I think exclusively now. But we've always raised money to help educate kids. We think uh, that's the major purpose of the Western Stock Show Association. So when, uh, when we we're called on to do a new campaign, this has got to be a partnership. We had to, first of all, we got released from the city on the naming rights and on the buildings, and that took a little bit of time. And Ron and Seal Williams, uh, Ron had been chairman of the board, stepped up and uh, offered the major gift that started the ability for us to move the yards. And uh, that really kicked off the campaign. And then we've just been, you know, I, I, I use the term steady pressure relentlessly applied. <laughs> and uh, we, just, we just keep asking and it's been fun. Right. I was invited a couple of years ago when this was first taking shape to have a tour of what all the plans were around the National Western Complex. And you were part of that. And every time somebody said, now in 2021, we're going to do this, you'd say, no, no, 2020. And they would say, now in 2023, we're going to expect, and you'd say, no, 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 2022 and a half. And you were just, you had the ball rolling, almost rolling over people before it even got started. Well, it's, you know, the first thing we did when we did, we just the legacy building which uh, is going to be headquarters for the National Western and I said we we need to have something that people can look at and say oh I get it we're going from 90 acres to 220 acres totally restructuring everything's going north of the of the railroad tracks instead of being split by the railroad tracks uh, eventually we'll have a new Coliseum a new uh, Hall of Education an Expo Hall uh, that's a whole nother Another project I don't, I'm not engaged in at the moment <laughs> except through the board. But this is a huge, huge project. Sure. And I think one of the attractive things about it to me is that uh, stock show is 16 days a year mm -hmm. in January. Uh, we call it the best 16 days of the year. Absolutely. But, uh, people, we all have 700,000 people come out here and enjoy connecting with, you know, with our Western heritage. So being able to have a facility that will be able to be used 365 year days round. a year is something worth working on, and it's important for the city of Denver and for Colorado and the region. Right, and, and in this day and age, the stock show is just more popular than ever. I think we'll probably break all records in terms of attendance and right. people coming out here. 
And I think the other thing is they bust students out here and we give them some exposure. They find out where milk comes from. The educational component is critically important and we're exposing them to some things right. that uh, they, you know, particularly the inner city kids might ordinarily or otherwise not have an opportunity to see. They can pet the animals and gives them a sense of uh, this is this is kind of where it happens. We have exhibitors, uh, animal exhibitors from all, almost every state and for many, many foreign countries that come here and educational for the cattle breeders, uh, the ranchers, the farmers. They go home with ideas of how they can improve sure. the quality of the beef. All around it's a great educational experience. Yeah, it really is and that's so important. It's such an important cog in this wheel. Now overlooking the what we talked about, the whole campaign to this point, what's your assessment on how it's going? We're uh, about three quarters of the way uh, there. The campaign is going great, and as they start construction, people begin to see things come out of the ground. More and more people will say, oh, I want to be part of that. Right. This isn't a capital campaign that we're going to do again next year. This is one and done. Uh, and I'm not saying that sometime in the future there won't be another capital campaign, but this will provide the funding to help the city build these facilities that will be, uh, be here for a long, long time. So I. I uh, I think, you know, if you want to if you want to get in and participate in some way, making this whole facility possible, this is the right time to do it. Yeah. So when somebody comes and wants to support, is that what you tell them? Good time is to jump in. Right <laughs> now. Jump in, yeah. And 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 we any any significant gifts, we say you know if you want to pay for it over three to five years, right? Uh, we can accommodate that, so it's not a it's not an immediate hit. We're a 501c3 tax exempt organization, so there's some tax benefits of participating right, right. as well and whether you want your name on something that's going to be here for for 100 years or just make a contribution that's a wonderful thing to do for the city of denver but you've got something for everybody from 30 million to, to 500 dollars talk a little bit about the the legacy bricks the branding wall everybody can get involved yeah the old yards were all brick we're digging up the old yards and we've preserved 35,000 bricks um, we're not going to sell that many, but we'll use them in construction. And we're having a wall in the new Legacy building that uh, will have roughly a thousand bricks that you can buy for $500 with your name on it. And it'll be etched, uh, laser etched, and they'll be there forever. Uh, so a good way to recognize uh, your family or yourself or friends. That we think is a pretty reasonable level of, of contribution, $500. We also have a branding wall where we are going to uh, have people who have many so far have signed up, uh, where we will place their brand on a panel in the doors entering the new National Western facilities. And uh, that'll be there for perpetuity. So we'll have their brand and the name of their ranch or uh, their family. And uh, so that's fun too. That's a little pricier at $2,500. But, and then of course, we'll just take, uh, take any contribution at ev any, every level. Right. But you've thought about so much, and that's what I like about everything that you've talked about. And also the Families of the West program, helping, you know, recognizing prominent families. That's a great program. Yeah, too. Two exciting things. One is uh, we'll have 15 panels in the new club uh, recognizing what we call Families of the West, so families that have a lot of history and heritage in the West. And, and we'll, people will be able to go in there and see, uh, uh, read about, you know, uh, 120 year history of, sure. of some farm ranch or, or some family. We're also doing a wall to recognize women in agriculture, which is a pretty exciting uh, yes. thing as well. That'll be in the livestock uh, building. And uh, it's amazing how, how many and how significant the involvement of women in agriculture is. Sue Ann Chuse Rogers, who's right. on our board, uh, stepped up early and we're naming the livestock uh, center a after her. So we need really big contributions because 100 million is a lot of money to raise. <laughs> I guess. But right now, the next year or two, what I'm more interested in is getting more people participating and feeling that they're part of preserving this wonderful heritage that we have here. And indeed it is wonderful. And I think also so important, and I know there were conversations about taking it out of Denver, but the decision that was finally made and the help from the mayor, keeping it in Denver is really paramount to the whole. Well, it's a, it's a huge partnership, really. And uh, when the ballot uh, initiative went on, uh, I think it's been three or maybe four years ago right. now, not to have a new tax in Denver, but to extend the larger tax, uh, it passed 100% of the precincts. I don't think there's anything that's ever been <laughs> initiated I think in, you're right. in Denver that's passed 100%. Uh, 
So the community is totally behind this. You know, I feel we have a duty, an obligation to do the right thing here and, and make sure that we have a facility that this area is, is going to be uh, incredibly proud of. And what a wonderful thing. Yes, 16 days in January. But again, the year-round opportunity to be at the facility is, is also terrific. We'll be able to uh, host uh, every major horse show that goes on anywhere uh, in the country or the world, really. And uh, those horse shows, some of them are two to three weeks long. These are people who uh, can come to Denver, spend money here. Uh, sure. So the, the impact on the economy is going to be enormous. What a tremendous year-round facility uh, uh, to have. Pete, with all the, the hopes and dreams that you and, and everybody else has and everything that's surrounding this tremendous uh, opportunity here, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, I, <laughs> you know, I, we come and go, and uh, my legacy is wrapped up in my family with six kids and 14 grandchildren <laughs> who love coming to a stock sure. show. And uh, to, to know that they and, and their kids for generations to come will have an opportunity to get a little sense and feel for uh, what built the West and, and how, you know, business was conducted with a handshake. Uh, now we get got to write, write long contracts, but understanding the well when the country was settled, you know, you went out and you you made you made your way. And the independence and the, the personal responsibility associated with that and the values we need to preserve that. It's incredibly important. And that's one of the reasons I I get excited that we bring the school kids in here to to look at this right. stuff and and get at least some appreciation. I talked to a young lady the other day that was showing her uh, Simitol bull, and uh, it was about 9.30 in the morning, and I said, uh, how were those, you know, they fluff and buff right, those, sure. those cows for, to show them. I said, when did you get up this morning? When did you start working? She said, three o'clock this morning. This was a high school girl, and uh, she was very proud of that. It's a lot of work, and uh, being able to share that with people who who think that uh, oh yeah we get hamburger we go to McDonald's or we go to Burger King and uh, and have a burger and it, and it tastes great but to understand that that's coming from these people that work so hard to bring that to the table right and you've certainly helped that effort along uh, Pete Coors you know the name so important to Colorado <laughs> but also chairman of the capital campaign thanks so much for your time today thank you, I really appreciate, appreciate it with thank you continued great success <laughs> thank you